In this video, I want to look at the third isomorphism theorem for rings. We're going to start by looking at the statement of the theorem. The theorem says that if we let R be a ring and we let I and S be ideals of R with I as a subset of S, then the quotient ring R mod S is isomorphic to the complex quotient ring R mod I modded out by S mod I. And in order to really understand what the third isomorphism theorem is saying, we need to go back to realizing that this is one of the cases that the correspondence theorem deals with. In particular, what we've got is a ring R. And we have an ideal S inside of R. And we have S containing an ideal named I. And this is one side of the correspondence theorem. And because I is, a, is an ideal of R, we know that R mod I exists. And the correspondence theorem says if we use the natural map or the canonical map, we can take all of the subrings that contain I into subrings of R mod I, and any ideal over here corresponds to an ideal over here. It's also important to understand that I mod I is just the zero of this guy, which would be zero plus um, I. Now, because S is an ideal of R, that means the quotient structure R mod S exists. And because S mod I is an ideal of R mod I, we also have the quotient structure on this side existing. In other words, R mod I mod S mod I exists. And what the third isomorphism theorem says is that the quotient structure for this side of our diagram and the quotient structure for this side of our diagram are actually isomorphic to each other. Now, in order to prove the third isomorphism theorem, there, is a couple of, there are a couple of different ways of doing it. And the way that I want to do it uses the first isomorphism theorem. So I want to recall what the first isomorphism theorem says. And the first, isomorph the, the, first the first isomorphism theorem can be stated as follows. If I have pi is a map from R to R prime is an onto ring homomorphism, and the kernel of pi happens to be S, so S is an ideal of ring R, then R mod S just happens to be isomorphic to R prime. And uh, the handy dandy picture that we can think of here is R and S looks like this, and pi is onto R prime, and S is the kernel of pi, so S is going to the zero in R prime. And then the conclusion is that the quotient structure over here is isomorphic to the quotient structure over here. But if you're just modding out by the zero ideal, you actually just have the ring itself. In order to use the first isomorphism theorem, what we have to do is we have to find a map from R to the target ring R mod I modded by S mod I. So what our idea is going to be is this. I want to find a map that goes from R to R mod I modded by S mod I that is onto R mod I modded by S mod I and has kernel equal to S. 
In other words, I want to redraw this picture as follows. We want to find a pi that is going from r to our target ring of r mod i modded by s mod i such that we have r under pi goes on to this ring we want s to be the kernel, so S goes to the zero in this target ring. So it's the zero in this quotient ring. And we want pi to be a ring homomorphism. Now, the elements of this particular ring, the target ring, look like r plus i plus s minus i. And the elements and the zero element inside this guy, so the zero in, let me come down here and write this this way, the zero element inside of this quotient ring is the set s mod i, or we can think of it as the zero in r mod i plus the ideal s mod i. It's important to realize that the zero in r mod i is zero plus i. So let me make that a little bit clearer as well. So we want some kind of a ring homomorphism that has the property that the kernel of pi is equal to s. So if little s is inside capital S, pi of little s needs to be that particular uh, coset inside our target ring. Now it's important to realize that we don't have to go, uh, we don't have to go looking very hard to find a candidate for our pi. So I want to wrap this up with defining a pi for us to look at in more detail in the next video. So. Here is the idea. Let's try the obvious. If I take any little r inside ring r, let's make pi of r equal to r plus i plus s mod i inside this particular quotient ring. Now I know this is inside the quotient ring because this is inside r mod i and that's the ideal that we're modding out by to get elements inside r mod i modded by s mod i. And we'll leave this particular video with the following questions. Is pi a ring homomorphism? And if it is, is pi onto my target ring? And finally, is the kernel of pi equal to the set S. Because if the answers to all of these are yes, then the first isomorphism theorem will let us conclude that R mod the kernel of pi, which would be S, is isomorphic to 
the target rate. And we will be done. We'll investigate the proof in the next video.